Welcome to the mother of all DIY projects. This is the story of two guys that dared to dream the American dream. The American dream, which is the impossible dream. We are not building Legos, we are building a castle. Did he just say build a castle? You're damn right we did. We are gonna take you on an adventure of a tremendous build. They might not totally know what they're doing, but they got a lot of heart and they got a lot of drive. They're not afraid to fail and they're not afraid to try. It's a race against time. It's a race against money. It's a race against natural resources. Are these men gonna be able to stand on top of the castle when it's done or will it crumble underneath them? Will they succeed? Will they fail? Or will it be something worse? We're gonna find out if their cast of characters have what it takes to see this impossible dream through. It's gonna be amazing. This is American Castle. Um, castles have always been something romantic about them. Like women love castles, they all want to get married in one, you know, all the, um, probably because the king lives there and you know, women want the want the want the top dog, I guess. People who are confident from success are probably far more capable than what they used to be. They might even be more intelligent. Small wins build confidence over time. Confidence is important for everyone, and it's nice when you have people who are confident because then they'll take on like uh, bigger projects. Like, you know, Peter immediately jumped on that machine and learned how to do it very quickly. If the machine does an emergency, emergency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I put so the blade just... down and the whole thing, I put that one down with the big one down, and the whole thing came this way. So, no, so that, so, that so, button, so. it stopped everything. Yeah. So to push it, you push it in or you push it side? You oh, you just, you just, just boom. Okay. okay. To undo it, to unpush it, you got to. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. It's one step at a time. Um, you get more confident in what you're doing and make more progress, learn more stuff, and then, yeah, you've succeeded. So then you know, I guess you need a new goal. So you have another chance to fail. It's good. I got it. I, I, I think I got it. When I'm learning something new, uh, like the new machines, for me, it's just like, let's figure out how to get it done. You have to get it done, you have to get it done now. You know, figure it out. That's what's going through my head. The stone cutting machine, I feel really comfortable. I can operate it. If you make it too complicated, or you think in your head that something's too difficult, it's gonna to be too difficult. Like jumping off a cliff. You know, when you jump off a cliff, if you focus on everything that could go wrong, it looks very, very challenging, right? But if you really focus on taking three steps and jumping forward that way, it's not that hard. Where I'm standing may be full of dirt and rocks, but six days ago, it was a plush backyard full of green grass and trees as far as the eye could see. 100,000 years ago, this entire land was underwater. Coral was present and pleasant, but it's not covered in water anymore, which means in order to get to it, you gotta dig. So Alibaba is like the, the marketplace for I think all of China. You can buy anything you want from like small cheap trinkets to mass sell to like giant machines to like Chinese knockoff tractors and anything they got. Even electric cars you can buy on Alibaba. First you gotta order the machine. You kind of have to understand it. They don't tell you a lot about it. Then they're gonna try to sell you accessories. I bought a few too many for this thing that we're not using. Uh, so you have to understand that and navigate it. And then you got to deal with the shipping. And I try to get them to do door to door, but they don't. So then it's like finding a shipping agent that's good, like everyone else. They'll take care of the paperwork, which is all the tariffs and stuff. And it'll be released from the port, and then you can ship it to your house. The shipping container weighed way too much, 30,000 pounds. And they, the shipping company expected us to have like a crane and we didn't, so it was a big pain in the ass. But you know, usually they're smart enough to use the right truck to deliver, but actually, no, I take that back. When Peter mentioned building a castle and filming it, I was like, oh, well, I, I actually happen to have a, a Chinese quarry saw in a container on my property. Um, so then we went to go check on it, and when we opened the container, it was, you know, like we're in Florida, and when there's no sunlight and no airflow, you get a lot of mold. Yeah, I didn't know this thing weighed 18,000 pounds. It doesn't really look it. The forklift can only carry 5,000. So we had to drag it. Yeah, there's a lot of details, and when you miss them, it's a lot more work. So that was one of them. But you know, now it's, it's fun. Now we're building the castle. Oh, that's 
one before? No, no, no. 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 I saw a video on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> we got a YouTube video. Oh. In order for this machine to work, we have to make sure that it doesn't fall on its side. Uh, how do we do that? We put it on a rail system. Now this rail is extremely heavy, even though you think it's only one rail, human beings can't push it on their own. So we start with a bobcat or a forklift when we want to adjust it as we continue to cut through the earth. But when the rail slides over, it gets a little topsy-turvy because the ground isn't exactly flat. So how do we uh, stabilize it? Let me show you. We take these blocks of wood and they may be misshapen and if they are, well, well, what the hell? We just get a couple of blocks like we do with this little piece, right? And we put them together, throw them in the key spots where we want the stabilization and we effectively hammer them into position. We want it nice and tight and nice and level. You see right here where these kind of rivets are, this is where two pieces come together. This is the most important part for stabilization. In order to get this right, we usually use a giant crowbar to crank it up, and then we hammer that sucker in, and that allows this turning machine to kind of move seamlessly back and forth along the track, cutting and sawing at the ground. We started maybe 20 yards away, and we've cut 20 yards by, now it's a rectangle of 20 by 10, so 200 yards, 200 square yards, 200 square, I'm not a math guy. We've cut a lot of rock out and that's exactly how we've done it with this rail system. Get out of here. As far as the stone goes, so if anyone's ever bought stone before, it's very expensive. Like sometimes you're paying like, like the stone yard, you're paying like 30 to 80 cents a pound. And you know, as you know, like one cut of that machine is gonna create about four to 5,000 pounds of stone. So it's like, if you wanna build anything with thick walls, like and purchase stone, it's the Price is gonna be pretty high. But if you get it yourself, which a lot of stone enthusiasts do, then it costs a lot cheaper. But it's a lot more work. Unless you have that machine, and it's slightly less work. In, in five minutes, the one taught me in five minutes. Today I was actually really surprised myself. Uh, I had no idea that I could learn how to drive a forklift in five minutes, but uh, I guess probably uh, Juan's a really good teacher, so all the credit to him. Uh, you can go yeah, go. In a startup environment, which is what this is basically a startup, we, we don't know what we're doing. We don't know if the castle is going to be successful we don't know if the show is going to be successful so uh, we're teaching each other teaching the crew and we're all learning we're all getting better yeah, it's super important to learn fast and get better fast i mean for me it's a deal breaker if somebody just says that they're there to do one thing everyone's got to support each other in many different ways so if you're only here to do one thing you're probably fired <laughs> You know, I guess if you like doing what you do, then you, you dream of what you're doing. And right lately, I've been dreaming of rocks. So, <laughs> cutting rock. Yeah, the excavator, it's the cat excavator. So that one's a lot of fun because it's kind of like a giant claw you can just rip things up with. Pick things up with and rip out trees. So yeah, that one could be the most destructive. So maybe it's, it's a lot of fun. Earlier I was trying to level out the quarry so it's less work when you put the track when you move the tracks. See the report between Kurt and Juan uh, at work here. See, when we were doing a lot of technical stuff like cutting rock and moving the rail, everything has to be very precise. But then when it's time to sort of extend the quarry. These two guys do what they do best, and that's jump on machines and go absolutely ham. These guys do not give up. They are out there right now, like the left hand and the right hand, and, and all the things that, that we had heard from Juan about his time working with Kurt and the, the rapport and the camaraderie uh, over the course of the different years that Juan's been with Kurt, uh, you see it at play right now. I, I even said the word play, because they're actually at work, but it feels like play. I mean, look at these guys. They're, they're just they're incredible. Ayuda. 
<laughs> so we try not to do anything incredibly dangerous. <laughs> but yeah, we try as hard as possible. As we go higher, it's going to be way more dangerous. So we really have to be cognizant of that. Okay, hey, after this, it's five, ten minute break. Need something to drink something. Okay. Yeah, make sure you just drink, hydrate. Gonna have to be really careful as the higher we go. You know, there's gonna be a lot of people that want us to fail, so, and there's gonna be a lot of people that want us to succeed. But if we're gonna succeed, we have to show them that we're we're kind of like the David that beats Goliath. The way to beat Goliath is Goliath tends to be a little bit slower, a little bit less of a hustle mentality, uh, a little bit less sense of urgency because he's a little, a little bit comfortable. So we got to have the David mentality to outwork, outsmart, out hustle, uh, and you know, be, be also more open-minded. You know, why can't something be done? Ask yourself that question. Uh, keep asking the question: Why? 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 Can we do things better, faster, cheaper? So yeah, we got to have the David mentality. First two in, the last two out, right here. Love to see it. Hey guys, uh, if you liked the video that you just saw, you know, please uh, give us a like or subscribe. You know, we're not experts in YouTube or making shows or anything else, so uh, any help is appreciated. New video comes out every Sunday at noon Pacific time. And uh, that's uh, 3 p.m. for you uh, Floridians. Yeah, thank you.